The Whispering Town. There are new friends in the cellar, Annette, Mama said when I woke up. Time to take breakfast down to them. I paused at the top of the stairs. The cellar scared me because it was dark, but the whispering voices gave me courage. When I reached the bottom, I entered the secret room where we hid Danish Jews from the Nazis. A woman and her son sat on a cot. I'm Annette, I said, holding out the basket. Mama made you breakfast. I'm Carl. The boy took the basket and handed his mother a roll and a soft-boiled egg. We thank you, she said. Back upstairs, I sat down to my own breakfast. How long will our new friends stay, I asked. Two nights, said Papa. On the third night, a boat will take them to Sweden. While they're here, we'll need more bread, Mama said. After breakfast, I walked to the bakery. We have new friends, I whispered to the baker. Here's an extra, he whispered back, handing me a bulging bag. Stay safe. On the way home, I saw Nazi soldiers knock on a door across the street. Even though they had been in my town for a long time, my stomach still nodded when I saw them. Mama, Papa, soldiers across the street, I said when I came home. Mama tapped three times on the cellar door to warn our friends to be quiet. After the soldiers left, Papa looked up at the cloudy sky. No moon tonight, he said. It will be difficult for our friends to find the harbor in the darkness. The next day, I took food to the cellar again. Again, I let the whispering voices guide me down the dark stairs. This will help the time pass, I said, handing Carl some library books. He took them and smiled. I love to read. Mama, I need new books, I said when I came upstairs. After breakfast, I walked to the library. We have new friends, I whispered to the librarian. Be careful, she whispered back, handing me extra books. On the way home, I saw Nazi soldiers knock on our neighbor's door. Mama, Papa, soldiers next door, I said when I came in the house. Mama tapped three times on the cellar door. After the soldiers left, Papa looked up at the cloudy sky. No moon again tonight, he said. Maybe the clouds will clear tomorrow. Again, the next morning, I let the whispering voices guide me down the dark stairs. As Carl reached into the breakfast basket, a heart-shaped stone fell to the floor. Carl picked it up. I found this with my papa the last time we walked on the beach, he said. It's beautiful, I said. Annette, we need more eggs, papa said when we finished breakfast. I walked to the farm. We have new friends, I whispered to the farmer. Wish them well, he whispered back, giving me extra eggs. On my way home, I saw Nazis heading for our house. I cut across the alley and raced through our back door. Mama, Papa, the soldiers are coming to our house. They didn't answer me. No one was home. I tapped three times on the cellar door. Then I heard a pounding on the front door. Boom, boom, boom. I opened it a crack. We've heard rumors that someone is hiding Jews on this street, said the soldier, pushing the door open. I haven't heard any rumors, I said, trying to stop my voice from shaking. When we find them, we will arrest everyone, warned the other soldier. Trembling, I closed the door. The soldiers were here, I said, when Mama and Papa returned. They're looking for hidden Jews. Brave Annette, Papa hugged me. Our friends must leave tonight, even though it is cloudy. How can we get them safely to the harbor? 
I thought about being afraid of the dark cellar and how the whispering voices guided me down the stairs. Papa, what if we stood people in their doorways and used their voices to guide our friends to the boat? I suggested. Papa stood quietly considering my idea. That might work, he said. Help me arrange it. I ran to the baker, the librarian, and the farmer to tell them about our plan. They agreed to help and they spread the word around the village. At midnight, Carl and his mama came up from the cellar. Carl pressed the heart-shaped stone into my hand. Remember me always, Annette. I held the little heart against my own. After Carl and his mama slipped into the night, I leaned as far as I could out my bedroom window, and I heard our neighbor whisper from his doorway, This way, he said, guiding Carl and his mother toward the harbor. Then our neighbor's neighbor whispered, This way. The whispers continued from neighbor to neighbor until Carl and his mama had safely reached the boat. I squeezed the stone in my hand and imagined them walking free on the beach in Sweden. Less than a year after World War II began, Germany invaded Denmark. It would serve as a buffer to protect Germany from British attacks. Adolf Hitler also wanted the country's fertile farmland. At first, the Germans allowed the Danish government to continue ruling, but as time passed, the Danes grew tired of the Nazis, and they began to sabotage the occupation, meaning they resisted it. By 1943, the Nazis could no longer ignore the Danish resistance, and they took over the government. Shortly after, they began to round up the estimated 8,000 Danish Jews and sent them to, to send them to concentration camps. But the Danish people did not want their, to, they wanted to help the Jews that were in, in Denmark. So they hid them in private homes, warehouses, barns, hotels, and churches. They also secured boats and hired fishermen to transport them across the Sound to nearby neutral Switzerland. Almost all of the Jews were smuggled out of Denmark to safety. About 1,700 Jews escaped from a small fishing village called Gilalea. One moonless night, when the town citizens stood in their doorway and whispered directions to the harbor.